Hey, good afternoon, Cost Church. Hey, I wanted to uh, come to you today with a video for two reasons. Uh, one reason is because we didn't get to finish our message second service yesterday, and also to give you an update on what happened during our second service. So those of you in first service probably have no idea what happened yesterday uh, during our second service. So uh, we did a little video yesterday afternoon to let you know, but uh, we saw a miracle in this church yesterday during our second service. Um, what happened then, a wonderful person in our church uh, basically uh, they, their heart stopped beating, they stopped breathing, uh, there was no pulse, and we thought the, the gentleman had passed during the service. And uh, I went into this thinking, oh my goodness, this man is, he's, he's gone. And so what happened, we stopped the service, we cut the uh, video at that time, and so then we went into a time of praying in the church, and we led prayer and, and started just praying and lifting this up to God, because God tells us to pray for the sick. And so we as a church, the wonderful people that were here second service, prayed the house down uh, while people were back there working on him and trying to see what was going on. And then about five to ten minutes in, we heard that he started breathing. Uh, and uh, church, this is a miracle. I mean, we literally saw a person resuscitated yesterday because we believe that prayer changes things. And so we uh, are celebrating that. So then uh, as he went out the room later uh, on a stretcher after the EMTs came, he actually was waving. I just found this out today. He was waving. But at the end of the day, what happened yesterday is we saw a miracle yesterday, a man that's heart was not beating, a man that was not breathing, and they said that he had he showed all signs that he was dead, but he came back to life. And he is he's in a hospital still, and uh, we're waiting. They're running some tests, but the, I went to visit him last night, and at that time the doctor said we have no idea what happened. He was joking with me last night and back to his normal self. So what we believe from that is that prayer changes things, and it's just amazing. I'd like to thank our church, especially those of you that are in second service. You guys stuck around, and we prayed for about 35 to 40 minutes for Jesus Christ to heal this guy, and he was healed yesterday right in the midst of our church, which is interesting because we believe that prayer changes things. So we are just continuing to pray and believe that uh, this man's going to be back with us very soon. We saw a miracle yesterday. So that's what happened yesterday during the service and why we cut the live stream. So we're just celebrating that and so thankful that prayer changes things. And uh, Jesus heard our prayers yesterday, and we saw a miracle right in front of us yesterday. So anyway, I want to jump in here and just share with some of you that didn't get to hear the sermon. I think I was about a third of the way through. I'm going to do it a little faster. I'm going to give you scripture references. Um, I'm not going to read them, but I encourage you to look them up after. Uh, but I'm going to give you the, the scripture references and the points. But we talked about yesterday is being like Paul. Being like Paul, And the reason we should be like Paul is 1 Corinthians 11. Paul says this. He says, I want you to imitate me. Imitate means to model. So he says, I want you to imitate me as I imitate Christ. And so what we need to keep in mind here is that it's okay for Paul to say, imitate me, because he is living like Christ. He's, Jesus came to show us the way on how to live on this earth. So what we see here is Paul says, I'm going to imitate Christ. And this isn't just something he's doing of going through the motions. He literally has a changed man. Because if you remember, uh, Paul used to be Saul, and Jesus radically saved him. He used to want to kill Christians. Now he is a believer, and he's sharing the the good news with Christians. So he is in a relationship with Jesus. So that's why he wants to be like Jesus. So I just want to give you the 10 things that jumped out at me as we talked about yesterday in these points. So first one, I, I would encourage you to look at Acts 17 verse 16. We're talking about being like Paul. And we see in this situation that Paul went to Athens and he is he's bothered by what's going on in that city. And so what I came to the conclusion there is that Paul was bothered by the culture that went against God's will. And so then it led me to think this, am I bothered by the culture around me, the anti-God culture, the culture that's against Christianity? And so I just started thinking to myself, am I bothered like, the, like Paul was when he went to Athens, a wonderful city, but the cities I go to, the cities I'm around, right where I live, am I bothered by the culture today? If I am, I'm being like Paul, and of which is he's being like Jesus, because it says Jesus would go and he'd look at all the masses of people, and it said he had compassion on them. He had compassion. So Jesus was bothered 
by the culture that was not going the direction of God. The second thing, Acts 17, 24 through 31, I would encourage you, look it up once again. I'm not going to take the time to read it to you. But Paul was convinced that the God he followed was the only true God. See, he had that radical transformation on the road to Damascus. And no matter, he was always under a undergoing trial. He was always um, arrested. He was arrested numerous times for just preaching the gospel. But one thing about Paul, he was convinced that the God he followed was the only true God. And then it started me thinking, do I believe that Jesus is the only way and that his way, he's not the only way, but that the way he tells me to walk, which is his way, is best. And so I just started reflecting on that. Do I really believe it? It's one thing to say it. But I would encourage us today to be like Paul and to come to the place that we really believe Jesus is the only way and that his way is best. The third thing, Acts 18, verse 9 through 11, what we see here is Paul heard from God for direction in his life. And when you read that, you'll see that it talks about Paul had a vision. And his vision was that God appeared to him and said, listen, don't be afraid. I have people here for you to lead into my kingdom. So don't be afraid. I will be with you. And it started me thinking, am I like Saul or Paul in this way? Do I hear from God for direction in my life? And I encourage you that God wants to give you dreams. He wants to give you visions. He wants to speak into your life on a regular basis. Remember this, he'll never speak anything that's contrary or goes against what the Bible says. So if that happens, you can throw it out. It wasn't God because he's always going to speak and be consistent with his word. But I I promise you, I, I encourage you to get to the place to say, God, I want you to speak to me through dreams and visions. This changed Paul's life because it helped him stay there, I believe, for another year and a half and gave him the courage to stay there because God told him, he said, Step, don't be afraid. I'm with you. Another area I would encourage you for is Acts 19, uh, verse 5 through 12. And what we see here in this, Paul continued to live in the revival of his life that God started when he received Christ as his Savior. And I, I just asked myself this question, do I continue to live in the revival of my day of salvation? Do I still believe that prayer changes things, which we saw yesterday firsthand right here? Do I still believe that it's important for me to share the faith, my faith with other people, so that they will receive Jesus as a Savior? Do I still spend time in prayer with God? Do I still do all the things that that were stirring in my heart when I first became a Christian? And that's a question I ask, because Paul constantly, he continued to pray for believers. They received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. He continued to preach. He continued to pray over people and they were healed. And my question is, has that changed since I've been a Christian? It should be growing. If you continue on down into Acts 19, verse 13 through 16, we're going to find out that the enemy knew Paul was filled with the power of God. And if you read the story, what you'll see is that there was a situation here where there were seven sons of Sceva who had cast out and were trying to cast a demon out of a person. And the demon came out of the person, actually spoke to those guys and said to them, I know who Paul is, but I don't know who you are. And so what that says to me, it it led me to the place of, does the enemy know that I am filled with the power of God? Paul was certainly filled with the power of God. Why? Because even the demons recognized and said, I know who Paul is. I know who Jesus is, but I don't know who you guys are. See, there's a difference there. What's the difference? Paul was filled with the power of God. These guys were not even followers. And so it led me to the place in my life. Does the enemy know that the power of God lives inside me. It's nothing of my own. It's only God giving me the grace that allows me to walk in the power of God. So does the enemy know who I am? If you jump down to Acts 20, verse 1 through 2, we'll see that Paul traveled around a lot, and and wherever he went, he searched out and and was looking for fellow believers uh, that followed the way, which... Christianity was called then. And so it, it, we see that he encouraged and met with believers everywhere he went. We see that. It's numerous times he's looking for people. And so it made me start thinking in my personal life, in my walk with Christ, to be like Paul. Do I encourage and meet with believers? Who, as I shared it yesterday, I shared it again, who I hang with affects me. If I hang with people that aren't followers of Christ, I'm going to become like that. I should be showing them something different in my life so that they will want to be like Paul, who's like Jesus. And so, do I encourage other believers? Do I hang with them? 
Four more and we're going to be finished. Acts 20, 24 says this. It says, uh, if you read that, when you read it, my point from this was Paul knew what the most important th assignment on this earth was in following God. He knew his most important task was to preach the good news and live for Christ and reach as many people as he could. That was his number one assignment. I know we all have different assignments. We have different jobs, parents, uh, all these different roles we play, and those are all very important. But it led me to this question. Do I know what my most important assignment on this earth is? Number one, that's to live for Jesus and be in relationship with Him. But the outflow of that is to preach the good news and to represent Jesus. Paul certainly represented that in the way he lived his life. So I want to be like Paul, who is imitating Jesus. Acts 26, verse 12 through 18. You will, if you read that, you will see this, that Paul never forgot where he came from in his story with Jesus. What you see as you read this is he's retelling the story of his road to Damascus experience. And it led me to think this, think about this for myself. Do I remember where I came from in my story with Jesus? See, my story with Jesus is not just the day that I confessed him and received him as my Savior and turned from my sin, but it's my whole story of what he's doing in my life, how he's changing me and healing me of issues in my life and using me to represent him in the world. I just think we should remember, never forget where we came from. And when we look at where we were and compare it to where we are now, there's no comparison because I could not imagine life without Jesus. If you go to Acts 14, 8 through 15, you will see that Paul did not elevate himself above Jesus. And so what happened, If you, as you read this, you'll see that he had healed a man. And what happened then is they started thinking that he was like a god. And so Paul could have very easily taken that because he could have manipulated these people. He could have started thinking he was greater than, than God, the, the one he represents. And he could have received all that, but he did not elevate himself. He said there's only one God, if you refer back to one of my opening points. And then I started thinking in all the things that I'm doing for Christ and living for him and things that happen in our lives, we pray for people. Do I try to elevate our, myself above Jesus? Listen, the miracle we saw in this church yesterday, we, the, a person who was dead who came back to life and, and was resuscitated, that is completely all Jesus. We as a church prayed and we saw a miracle happen. We get no credit. We are just honored. I'm just so over, overwhelmed today that I was able to be part of that and to see Jesus Christ raise somebody up like that yesterday. And Last but not least, in Acts 19, 17 through 20, this is the follow right after the story I referred to earlier about the seven sons that tried to cast the demon out of the person where the demon said, I don't know who you guys are. So what happened then is you read this, you're going to see that Paul created a culture change. What happens in the story is as a result of that demonic activity, which is very alive today, it was alive in God's word, it's alive today. What we see here is that because the, that, that demon beat up that person, it says it beat him up until he was naked and he was beaten badly. That news started spreading around of this had happened. And so what it did, it caused people to begin to change. And they, it says that they begin to burn all, all their so books of sorcery. And anything that dealt with the demonic or the occult, they, they, they burn it. It said it was about $3 million in value in today's standards. And so Paul created a culture change. He was preaching. Great things were happening. People were being convicted. And in this situation, people were actually getting scared because of the demonic realm, which is real. But we have greater power than that through the name of Jesus Christ. And so I just want to remind you of that. But then I started asking myself, do I create culture change? Is the way I live my life, is it changing the culture? As long as I do it in humility and in love, knowing that I am only here because of the grace of Jesus Christ, which gives me the, empowers me to live for him every, every day. So I just close with this question. How much does my life resemble the life of Paul as he imitates Jesus? And I think it's a good question for us this week as we, as we head and continue on through Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Am, am I imitating Paul, who is imitating Jesus? Do people see Jesus in my life? Certainly, there's only one Jesus. Certainly. But he died, and he's the only way into heaven to pay the price for my sin. But he did. One of the reasons I said he came to the earth is to show us that we could do the things he did. We could pray for people We should and see healings. We could, we could, we could um, preach the good news. We could be used in all these different areas as we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
And so I just encourage us this week as we close out uh, to, uh, our, am I like Paul as he imitates Jesus? God has great things for all of us. And I just want to encourage you this week. Let's become more like Jesus. Let's become more like Jesus. Let's become more like him and let him use us. And I encourage you to read all these areas in the book of Acts that I just shared. And, and let's let them get into us and change us. Because as I've said all six weeks of this Acts series, that I believe and it's God's word that this is his design for the church in 2024. So we are going, we are becoming a church like that. And uh, we're just excited. And once again, I just want to say God gets all the glory for what happened in this. I've been a pastor for a long time and I've never seen what I saw happen in this building yesterday. 